welcome back to Pocket Rockets, and today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is my AutoArt Nissan Skyline R34 GTR V Spec 2 Nurburgring Edition, finished in Bayside Blue with BBS LM wheels. So, today we're going to be talking a little bit about it, doing a tour of it, if you will, and then we're going to be doing a special bonus comparison between the Ottawa version of the R34 and the Salido version of the R34. Both, I think, are the opposite ends of the spectrum. One being pretty expensive, the other being relatively cheap. So, let's get into it. So, I think the first thing that we're going to start with is just all around detail. The detailing is a part that I can't really pick apart because this is a auto art model and um, I normally review 164 cars so I normally review the kind of terms of detail that I expect from a 164 scale cars but there's just so much on this car that kind of blows my mind I think we're just gonna slowly go through them all so we're gonna start from the front so the front we have the first thing that kind of is a really nice touch I think is the headlight so if you kind of look really closely into the headlight you will see that the um, kind of base of the headlight the base of the headlight housing is black but you will see that the sides on the um, bulbs are actually silver but the bulbs themselves are actually chrome which I think it's just a the first detail that this thing is a auto art I mean this is like auto art type of detail and the second thing that I really like is, well, you have to kind of open the hood to tell. So I'm going to open the hood right now. So what you do by opening the hood is you kind of, there are little, there are two magnets that are right here and here. So when you close the hood, you kind of hear this, that is the magnet sticking together. So when you t tilt the car upside down, the hood kind of doesn't open up its own accord and does some unknown damage. So we're going to. Kind of pry it open you got to be really really careful because i do not want to scratch this paint so once you got it open i think i'm gonna get some tools actually because i'm a bit nervous about breaking this so there's this little stay here so you kind of have to kind of prop it up prop it up and then let the hood lay onto the stay right here right right like that so yeah that's the stay right here you put it down and you prop it up to let the hood lay on there there we go so the second detail lies right here. So the, so you actually see past the GTR sign. You can you can actually see a part of the radiator inside of the um of the inside of the bumper. So I think this is a really good detail and it's it looks really really cool when it's like this and I just think it's an awesome detail that the grill is not just a piece of plastic but mesh and I this is auto art level quality, guys, but you also pay auto art level money. So now we got the hood open. I think it's fair that we talk about inside the hood, the engine. So first look at the engine. We got the RB26, the iconic shape of the RB26 finished in this really nice kind of cherry red. And I think this looks fantastic. Contrary to kind of popular belief, I think this red actually looks really good on this blue. They kind of do a little contrast, and I don't hate it. And we got also got all of the components here, beautifully detailed. We have the um, we have kind of like a little, we got we got like a little sign here, and uh, I think this is like kind of about the car. And uh, we got the VIN all the way in the back right here that is the, the little metal plate on there that's the vin and just pretty much really good detail on the engines and these two are actually the magnets you can see my uh, screwdriver kind of sticks to it these two are the magnets that are holding the hood down and i don't know if you can see it but the whole underside of the hood is actually carbon textured so that's also a really nice detail so we're gonna Get the hood now and uh, get the stay down from there. Kind of prop it back down and then magnet does its work. And you can actually kind of see the carbon from here, which is also a really nice touch. This just singular vent letting you know that, hey, there's carbon underneath. So in terms of the hood, there's just, the paint quality is, what can I say about it? It's auto art paint quality. There is zero orange peel, which is super impressive to me. And the panel line from the hood to the fender is also seamless. There is 
the pan there is zero panel gap. The panel gap is consistent all the way throughout the car on all of the panels, which is really, really cool. So now moving on to the sides. So sides, the side is where I kind of fall in love with this car. And that is because of these BBS LM wheels. So let's talk a little bit about them. I mean, just look at these. These look so good. So the BBS LMs were actually the reason that I bought this car. I bought this car because of the BBS wheels. If this car didn't have BBS wheels, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And the reason is I think BBS wheels just look so great, especially when they're made by AutoWire. AutoWire has, has used these same wheels for a lot of cars now, mainly Nissans, I think, but they just look so good. And their latest release with the BBS LM just look amazing. I mean, I love this center cap, this gold center cap with the chrome lip. It it just looks like perfection to me, guys. It Can you say that this doesn't look awesome? This looks awesome. So yeah, now uh, we're talking about the wheels. I think we might talk about the brakes, the brake, the brake pads and the brake calipers. So if you kind of zoom in right there it's a little wobbly but you can actually kind of see the brake pads right there and the brake pads actually do move with the wheel of the car and if we kind of spin the wheel fast you can almost read out the brembo written on the uh yellow well not yellow but the gold brake calipers so these are brembo brakes i don't know if you can kind of oh yeah there we go that's a little more obvious so yeah that's just really really nice and also I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the brake, kind of the brake rotors actually have a metal texture to them. Kind of, can you see it? Yeah, you can't really see it, but the, but the brake uh, rotors actually do have a metal to them, which is also just a really, really neat feature. So yeah, moving on to the rear. So the rear, we have just the usual stuff from Auto Art. Uh, the rear window, we do have a little kind of we do have a little wiper here and you can kind of see through to the flocked interior which we'll get to later but yeah the rear is just kind of standard r34 well i mean what can i say about this the detail is amazing the attention to detail is really just astounding i mean check out this nissan badge right here can you say that this doesn't look like a real real life nissan badge it looks like a scale one-to-one -one replica of a nissan badge but just a lot smaller and also for the trunk, we do have um, the brake lights, the trunk, the trunk lock, which I think is really awesome. You can actually see that there there is a kind of there. There's just a lot of detail all around this car, and uh, you you might be you might find me speechless sometimes because I'm not used to reviewing like big cars like these. So yeah, we got the GTR emblem, also made out of. Well, also made out of this kind of metal material that I think metallic shiny material and we got the v-spec badge printed on there so I think the thing that kind of I think that may be improved on this car is the number plate I mean yes I know that it is a r34 but I would really love to see like a real plate on this car maybe like a Japanese plate or maybe even a, a, a US plate which I think would just make the car a lot more fun and also got the exhaust tips here and they what can i say about them man they look awesome they really do look awesome they they have this metallic kind of texture to them and i know that they're plastic but they really do convince you that they're metal All right so now we're going to be talking about the base of the car so i'm going to kind of lift it like that to prevent the mirror from snapping so this is kind of the base so this whole part we are this whole kind of under part rear is carbon textured and you can actually see the transmission and everything the driveline transmission exhaust and the front control arms and this is actually really cool to me because if you actually turn the wheels the front control arm and the just just the front kind of columns steering columns and the control arms all kind of move which is really really cool and we do have a lot of detail down here just a lot of a lot of stuff going on and uh, yeah I think this just overall is really really cool so now I'm gonna open up all of the cars openable features so first of all of course we got the hood we're gonna get the oh whoa 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 we're gonna get the stay up and I'm not gonna be opening the driver's side door because there are a little there are some issues to it which is just not convenient for me to open 
I will open the passenger side door like this, which looks really, really cool. And then we, we can reveal the flock trunk. So I want to talk a bit about the trunk because there is actually like kind of a replica oil filled shock right here, which you can kind of see as we open and close the trunk and just you can't you can't really see this on camera but just the feeling of opening and closing the trunk there's kind of this sandy feeling that just feels so satisfying to me which is kind of weird but hey i like opening and closing this trunk right letting the magnet do its work there and also closing the trunk now we have a little deeper look at the interior of, oh whoa, whoa 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 gotta be gentle there so yeah the floor is flocked and uh, the the camera angle doesn't really allow me to show you all of the interior but i will do my best like this yeah let's hold it like that that's cool so the interior is flocked the uh floors are flocked and the seat is made out of a hard plastic actually but it does have the texture of a well, it does have texture of a seat and also the dash we just have a lot of detail in there and of course when i steer the wheel the wheel also steers which is one of the things that i just love about auto art is just how much steering wheel angle just how much steering angle there is like normally like for for my so maybe this is gonna be all of your steering angle but for auto art you can go like this which is just a lot and yeah like i said the dash lots of detail in there we got the dash we got the speedometer the wheel just everything is very detailed in there and we even have some uh, chrome kind of accents on the seat in the middle right there and seatbelt buckles are also present and seatbelts are also present back here you can also see the kind of buckle area which is really really neat so yeah that's pretty much the exterior of this car and just kind of the details on it and uh Oh my god, it's already, it's already a 12 minute video. So yeah, but now we're going to be doing the comparison segment with the Auto Art and the Auto and the um, Stolito Mobile. So let that enter here. It's kind of stuck, so we'll just drag it in. So yeah, what I want to kind of accomplish with this section is just kind of tell you guys the difference between a $260 car and a kind of $70 cars. It, it, it's, it's quite a lot of difference. So yeah, this car was $260 and this car is a $70 car and they're all made, they're made by different manufacturers. They're all 118 scale and they're all of, of the same car. So I think first we're going to start with the Salido one. So, well, you know what? I'm actually going to talk a bit about both. So first of all, I think the main difference is just the type of quality of the stuff that they use. You can kind of see on the Salido model the glass and disclaimer i did not just I, I i just normally i kept this like a normal collector's car but just from me wiping it you can actually see a lot of swirls on the glass which is not pleasant but the auto art virtually has zero swirls on the glass so i think this is just the type of material that they use it's gonna be different and also the paint the paint, this thing actually kind of surprised me because it has, doesn't really have a lot of orange peel, but also just the swirls, like the swirls, I don't know why, but they are present on this car, on this metallic paint, but the base side blue does not have any swirls at all. I mean, you can't really see it, but there we go. The swirls are just, I think it's just like a difference in quality. And uh, this thing is also abs as well so what abs is is basically just plastic so auto art changed from making die cast stuff to plastic a few years ago and they have drawn some criticism mainly because the older auto art cars were all die cast and uh after some years they all the paint started having problems mainly blistering up and uh well the resale value on those are not great so auto art actually decided to make abs models so that um the paint are gonna the paint is actually gonna stay in perfect condition they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna blister up or anything but yeah i think mainly the difference between these two cars are just kind of really general things like even down to the things like just proportions in general like you look at this front end and it doesn't 
kind of hold up to this front end. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but the proportions on the auto art is just a lot more correct. And also just the wheels. I mean, you can act, you can just really see the difference in the kind of quality of the wheels. Even the brake calipers. I mean, it's using literally the same brake calipers as the um, auto art one. And you can, you can just see the brake rotors are just one color no detail on them no texture on them and they're actually just really really small but so yeah that's just kind of the little that that's just the difference between price i mean you get what you paid for like even the things like headlight housing i mean you look at this headlight housing and there's pretty much just very minimal details in there there's not much going on in there and it just kind of feels empty but you look at the auto art the headlight housing is just a lot a lot more like a real r34 and yeah i get it you, you get what you paid for so I, I guess people are still gonna buy this it's not a bad car or anything it's it's definitely a really really good car for what it's uh what it's selling for but for me i would always pick the r the auto art but i do have both anyways that's kind of a weird ending it's a 16 minute video which is insane for me i hope you enjoyed and uh, i'll try Pushing out, pushing out more videos, and I hope you enjoyed this one. It's been Pocket Rockets. I'll see you again, probably not very soon. Bye.